In most respects, James Lasser is a very average man. He looks like an average guy. He has an average job, lives in an average home, and drives an average car. In almost every regard, he is just that, average. But there's one thing about James that makes him quite unique, something that the average person is not able to relate to. James Lasser is a murderer. James wasn't always a murderer, of course. It all started one day when James was at work. James was a cell phone salesman. It was a very slow day for him. He was mindlessly staring out the window of a storefront. That was the first time he saw her. She was the most beautiful thing he had ever seen. From the moment he laid eyes on her, he was completely captivated. He continued staring at her until she was out of view. Although he was only able to look at her for a matter of seconds, he found himself thinking about her and obsessing over her every time he didn't have something else occupying his mind. Days went by, and James finally found himself accepting that the idea of seeing this girl again was just a fantasy. That was until one day when he found himself at work. He was in the middle of hanging accessories on the wall when something caught his attention out of the corner of his eye. It was her. James had to blink to ensure that he wasn't just seeing things, but he wasn't. She was really there. James immediately dropped what he was doing and walked outside into the parking lot. He followed the girl, making sure he stayed back far enough so he wouldn't be spotted. She eventually walked into a restaurant that was located in the same parking lot as the cell phone store James worked at. He kneeled down behind a row of cars and watched her through the windows as she walked through the restaurant. Suddenly, James' heart began to race out of control and he was filled with absolute joy as he watched the girl put on an apron. She's a waitress, he thought. She works right next to me. He watched her for several more minutes and then raced back to the store so he wouldn't get into trouble. From that point on, James was a different person. He was absolutely elated. More time went by and he continued to watch her. His feelings grew stronger and stronger for her. He eventually decided that he was in love with her. He pictured his life with her marriage, kids, living happily ever after, etc. The only problem is that he would first need to ask her out. She didn't even know he existed yet, but he knew they were meant to be together. He knew they were soulmates. After weeks of careful planning and consideration, the time came for James to reach out to the girl. He was nervous, but he also knew they were meant to be. He knew that asking her out was going to be the beginning of a beautiful relationship. James carefully studied her work schedule, becoming aware of what days she worked. With all the confidence in the world, he went into her place of work one evening. He was brought to a table by the hostess and sat patiently, waiting for the girl of his dream to come take his order. His thoughts raced through his mind. He wondered if she would know they were soulmates the moment she saw him. If not, that was okay too. He knew that he would be able to bring her to the realization either way. After several nervous minutes of waiting and drinking coffee, James spotted the girl of his dreams. She was talking to the hostess. The hostess pointed over to James's table, and the girl he loved began walking towards him. His heart began pounding out of his chest. He felt like he had been waiting his entire life for this very moment. Hi, my name is Ava. I'll be taking care of you tonight, she said. Hi, my name is James, he replied. What can I get you started with tonight? Well, actually, I'm not here because I'm hungry. I'm here because you and I are supposed to be together, and I wanted to ask you on a date. Oh, replied Ava. She tried to hide the shock and disgust on her face, but she knew she wasn't able to. She continued, Um, I'm sorry, I'm already in a relationship. Uh, well, just let us know if you need anything else. Ava quickly walked away. James' heart sank into the floor. He felt like life itself was ripped away from him. He was in absolute shock and disappointment. How did she not know we were meant to be together, he thought. He went on to think about Ava and the current relationship she was already in. The idea of her being with anyone else absolutely enraged James. He left money for his coffee on the table and stormed out of the restaurant. For the next few weeks, James did the best to keep Ava out of his mind. Every time he thought of her, it was like a knife into his heart, causing the same pain and rage he felt the night she rejected him. He tried to accept it, he tried to live with it, but he couldn't. 
He felt like his life was meaningless without her. For a period of time, he contemplated killing himself, but he soon realized he was too much of a coward. He would never go through with it. Then, James had another thought. Why would he kill himself? This wasn't his fault. He wasn't the one who was responsible for his depression. He wasn't the one who couldn't recognize his soulmate. That's when he made a decision. He was going to kill Ava. She ruined his life, and he was going to take hers. But, he wasn't just willing to run out and do it. No, this was going to be carefully planned. This was going to be the only thing that could relieve him of his hate and rage, and it had to be executed perfectly. James, being the self-proclaimed genius that he was, knew that he could come up with the perfect crime, that he could get away with murder. He figured that in addition to his intelligence, the fact that he had watched Dexter and Forensic Files had taught him what to do, and more importantly, what not to do. Weeks of planning turned into months, and his hate and anger only continued to grow. He felt like watching Ava walk into work was only taunting him. He knew he had to go through with it, and with all the planning in the world, he did. James killed Ava. And a couple nights later, while watching the news, he learned more about her. Her name was Ava Reynolds. She was on the local news as a missing person. When even more time passed, eventually her parents were on TV, begging for information leading to the return of their daughter. And instead of feeling compassion, James's rage returned. Killing Ava hadn't sufficiently quenched his thirst for what he thought was justice. He was angered at her parents. How dare they bring someone into this world and raise them to be like Ava? James was proud of himself. He seemed to have gotten away with murder, just like he knew. He wanted to be able to brag about it. He also wanted to hurt Ava's parents. That's when he came up with another genius idea. He would find out Ava's parents' address and send them a letter, not only telling them that their daughter is dead, but letting them know precisely how he killed her. Being excited with this idea, he began writing. His letter read, Dear Mr. and Mrs. Reynolds, you don't know me, and you never will. But, for reasons I can't discuss, I found it unacceptable that your daughter live on this planet anymore. So, I killed her. Yes, she is dead. Since I thought this information would be relevant to your interests, I decided to give you more details surrounding it. I first obtained various items I would need to kill your daughter. Some from the deep web, others from Walmart. I was actually able to find a chemical online that was similar to chloroform, except even stronger and faster acting. Neat, huh? I waited for your daughter to walk to her car around midnight on a Saturday night after work like normal. I hid behind her car, where she wouldn't be able to see me. I was able to render her unconscious in a matter of seconds, with a rag soaked in that fantastic deep web liquid. Upon studying, I learned that this wouldn't keep her asleep for as long as I would need her to be. So after I carried her to my car and put her into the tarp in my trunk, I injected her with a high dose of a benzodiazepine. Again, all compliments to the deep web. I drove her hours and hours away to a destination of my choosing. Obviously, I couldn't just bring her home. I made sure to patiently wait for her to gain consciousness. I wanted to look into her eyes while I killed her. And just as important, I wanted her to know she was being murdered and who was the one doing it. She needed to know why. So once her eyes opened, I slapped her to get her attention. She was obviously panicked to see me, but that made it all the more fun. I decided to use a knife to kill her. I've always been a fan of the classics. I began to press the blade against her neck. She tried fighting me off, but she didn't stand a chance with the way I had drugged her. And that was it. I cut her neck from ear to ear. She bled a lot. Humans have a lot of blood in them, lol. But it was okay, I was prepared for it. I had the perfect kill room set up. I also made sure none of her DNA would get on me, and even more important, none of mine would get on her. Once she bled out, I spent the next 36 hours disposing of her. It took far longer than I expected. I drained the blood from her body. That stuff was easy to get rid of. I then spent hours cutting her up. I wanted her into pieces that were small enough to flush. This process was even more difficult than I originally thought. It took a lot of tools, but I got it done. 
with the pieces of what was once your daughter in my bags, I cleaned up the kill room, loaded your uh, daughter in my car, and we were off. I then flushed her in various toilets at every restroom I could find on the long drive home. I took a warm shower once I got home, and had a nice, relaxing, well-deserved sleep after. You see, Mr. and Mr. Reynolds, your daughter was killed by someone who was actually smart enough to get away with murder. There are no fingerprints on this letter. Without a body, there's very little chance of a murder charge sticking to anyone. And trust me, there will never be a body recovered. They'll also never find a murder weapon. They won't even be able to find my motive. Nothing. Zilch. Zero. Sorry, but it's true. Now, this all could have been avoided if you two had raised your daughter to be a decent person. Really, I believe I did the world a favor. Why am I writing this to you? Well, I wanted to erase any and all hope you may have that you would see your daughter again one day. Sincerely, he who killed your daughter. James found the parents' address and put the letter in the mailbox. He was then filled with a sense of euphoria. For the next several nights, he waited for the letter to be mentioned in the news. He was excited to see the news talk about the killer, about him. But it never happened. Night after night, there was no mention of a letter, let alone a killer. Several weeks went by, and still nothing. Did the letter get lost? Did he have the wrong address? James contemplated if it was one of these things. Or maybe they thought it was a hoax. He considered writing another letter. But before he had the chance, he found out that the letter did reach its intended recipients. James got home from work one day to find an envelope taped to his front door. He thought nothing of it, grabbed it off the door, and went inside. He sat down on the couch and opened it up, pulling a folded piece of paper from inside. What he found was a letter directed to himself. It read, Mr. Lasser, thank you for taking the time to write me. I appreciate at least knowing whether my daughter was alive or not. Don't worry, I'm not contacting the police, I promise. I wanted to write you to let you know that I'm able to appreciate a smart guy like you, as I'm quite clever myself. I work at the post office for a living, so once I received your letter, I went ahead and decided to track it back to see where it originated. I was able to trace it to a particular drop-off box. Based on when I received it, I was able to determine which day it was dropped off into the box. Even better, I was able to find video footage of a security camera that had the drop-off box in sight. Now, obviously, there were dozens of people that drove up and dropped off mail that day. But, being that it's the middle of summer, only one of those people had gloves on. Obviously, that would be gloves you wore so I couldn't trace you. Kind of ironic, huh? L-O-L. Anyway, from there, I had your license plate, and the rest, well, a smart guy like you can figure it out from there. Anyway, like I said, I'm not contacting the police. The fear you must be feeling right now, knowing that you're outed, is even better than going to the police. I just wanted to let you know that you aren't the only person capable of being clever. Sincerely, the father of the girl that you murdered. P.S. Look behind you.